In this video, what I want to do is talk to you about uh, creating a Bloomberg account and also your Bloomberg certification. The only way to create a Bloomberg account is to do it at a Bloomberg terminal on the Maryland campus, preferably in 3505, our classroom, because the way the Bloomberg license works, they know which terminals are registered to Maryland, and when you register, they will give you an account. If you do it outside, they're not going to give you an account. So, Bloomberg is just software. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not actually hardware. So, what you want to look for on each of the computers at 3505 is the Bloomberg icon, which you will then launch, which will launch the software. Now, you'll do this to either access this uh, throughout the semester, once you have an account, or it's actually where you will create an account for the Bloomberg terminal. And I don't know if you noticed it, but uh, the serial number that flashes when you first log in is also part of their security, which is why they know what serial numbers are on the Maryland terminals, and you have to be at one of those to create an account. So, when you launch the software, you can choose your language. So if you're not a native speaker of English and you want to see all of their screens in a local language, these are the languages available for you. But assuming I'm going to choose English, <clears throat> I then click the Enter key, which is the Go key in Bloomberg Speak, and I'll be presented with this screen. I can type in my login name or password if I have one. Now, you won't have one, so what you'll do is down here, <clears throat> there's a screen that says Create a New Login. You'll click on this. <clears throat> so basically, it's going to ask you very simple questions. Uh, basically, who you're creating the login for? Myself. <clears throat> have you ever been a Bloomberg user before? Probably going to say no. <clears throat> Hit next. <clears throat> You'll type in your first name, last name, and then choose a login name. Uh, basically, just letters. And then type in, what's most important is type in your cell phone number. Uh, and then email address, where it says company email. It doesn't have to be a umd.edu email. It could be any email address, but it's got to be a real one because that's where you're going to validate. Uh, it could be Gmail, it could be Yahoo, whatever. So here's the point. Put in your cell phone, put in your email, and then you will hit next. Now, I'm not going to do this because I already have an account, but at that point, it's going to basically say, I'm going to send you a confirmation code to finish creating the account. If it's your cell phone, which is the easiest, they'll immediately send you a text message. You will basically type in that text message, and then it will finish the process of creating the account. Uh, if it's an email, you need to be able to have access to it because they'll send you the code as an email. And again, same thing. You'll type it in, copy and paste it in to create the account. Once you create the account, you have an account for the rest of the semester. Uh, so basically, I have an account, so I'm going to go back to this original screen. Now, when you normally log into Bloomberg to get to the Bloomberg certification, you would just type in, so this is my username and password. Now, you have some, I have something that you're about to see on the screen that you won't see, which is I actually have what's called a Bloomberg Anywhere login, because right now I'm actually recording this video from the Chicago airport. And <clears throat> it basically asks me to put in a fingerprint authentication uh, so that it actually knows it's me when I'm outside the UMD campus. You won't have this step in the lab. So ignore this flashy thing for a second. So once I put in my fingerprint, and it authenticates with this little biometric reader. So just take a second. It will give me a code. So it's be taking a second. Come on, Bloomberg. There it is. And then it lets you in. <clears throat> so again, that painful 20 seconds won't happen to you. So what will happen is exactly this. Type in your username and password. It will pop you up to the company that you were last on. It happened to be the PVH case that I was preparing you for. I'd gotten data out of Bloomberg. Now, for certification, what you're going to need to do is type in BMC short code, and Bloomberg has this limited kind of search functionality where if you start typing in a company or what you're looking for, it'll filter down to their keys. You can either use your mouse or arrow down, but what you want here is what's called Bloomberg Market Concepts. That is their training and certification 
material on how to use this terminal. So go to BMC, and then once you're here, it'll give you a general overview of what is in BMC and what's required to get certified. Now, you can also take the certification online at this website. However, they're gonna charge you $150, which is free if you're doing the terminal, and it's not as cool because while you're going through the terminal, you can do things dynamically. In the website, you just passively watch. So for your purposes, there is only one option, which is to take it through the, the terminal. So once you finish the certification, as I mentioned online, there's a certification for our class, and then there's the entire certification, which is more than what we do in class. If you complete it all, you actually get this nice little certificate, and you can put it on your resume. So when you click on course modules over here on the left, these are the four course modules that result in the certification. Economic indicators, which takes about an hour. Currencies, takes about an hour. Fixed income, takes about three hours. Equities, takes about three hours. To get the Bloomberg certification through Bloomberg, you have to do all four. For this class, I'm only requiring you to do two, the economic indicators and <clears throat> equities. You don't have to do the other two. Now, optionally, if you want to do the other two, get the certificate, be able to put on your resume, feel free. But for your homework assignment, you basically have to just do those two. Okay? So what will happen is once you start taking this course and you then can kind of get a sense of the overview, you'll click to sign up and then basically you're an individual learner, you'll continue as the learner, and I know it sounds weird, but even within the terminal that you've logged in on, there's a separate login to actually do the certification. And it's gonna be different than the one that you just registered with. So basically you're gonna create a second login just for the certification. First name, last name, email address, password. Are you taking as part of a group? You can say yes. If you go back to Elms, I posted in the assignment a code which is tied to our class. This is where you'll type in the class code. Now, here's the thing. By typing it in here, it means that we can then search for who has typed in the code and get information access. But for purposes of your grade, think of this as a backup plan. What then happens is you check this, sign up, and then you'll start the certification, and then you, will, you won't have to log in. But if you do re-log in to the BMC, remember the separate uh, email address and password you did for the certification because it's not your Bloomberg account. So basically what you'll do is you'll go to the screen where you'll then start to do the materials. In, included in the screens, which will be a combination of text, screenshots, and multiple choice questions throughout, you'll answer some questions. At the end of the module, once you've answered the questions and gone through the material, it'll give you a score. When you refresh what's this screen on the other side of a login, over here, it'll give you your percent correct. You must have 70% correct in my class to be certified. Now, Bloomberg doesn't have that highest standard. You can just kind of go through it. Uh, you can click through. You can actually score a little worse, and they'll stay that, say you've passed. But what you're going to submit is a screenshot showing that for economic indicators and for equities, you got 70% of those multiple choice or more correct. Now, when I tried to play around with this last year, just as a quick FYI, I've been using the terminal for seven years, and I just breezed through the material and just tried to answer the multiple choice questions without reading the material, and I got like 30% right. So I'm also going to give you a suggestion that the only way that you can score proficiency is if you go through the material, because the multiple choice questions are very specific to what you just read. And so here's the thing. If you go through and you see your score, and for one of these two sections, it's not 70%, Bloomberg does not let you take this again. So what will happen is when you go back in to BMC, you'll have to sign up using a different account within the terminal, not your Bloomberg account, but the BMC account, a second account, and then you take it as if you were starting from scratch. So, for example, let's say you pass equities but failed economic. Then create account number two, log in, 
take equities, make sure you pass with 70%. You will then submit two screenshots, the one showing that you passed one and the one showing you passed the other. If you do both and pass, then just submit one screenshot. So the key is by the beginning of class on Monday, I believe it's February 5th, uh, t actually 10 a.m. that day, you must have completed this certification. We're gonna be using Bloomberg in every class this semester. This is important. And then on February 14th, Bloomberg is gonna be with you to do more advanced training beyond what's on the certification. But I wanted to put this together, this video together to give you a little bit more of an insight of what you need to accomplish and how you need to accomplish that. Good luck, look forward to seeing you soon.